Nat 20. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nat 20, uh, Tyranny on the Horizon, part two. Last we left off, in a summary, uh, our adventurers, Bork, Aegis, and Arden, uh, started off in a tavern to which they talked to a couple of figures in there, uh, one of which challenged um, Arden to steal something from a bookstore. In return, he would get a ring. Uh, he successfully did so, but almost got caught by a guard. Um, once the ring was acquired, uh, Quinn, who is the right-hand man to the king, then uh, told the players that they need to go to the market square to make a speech. So, the players then ventured off, but on their journey, they razzled and dazzled the crowd with some magical tricks, uh, one of which being a spirit bear. But before they could reach the market square, they were interrupted by two guards who seemed to be bugging a man. Uh, they thought nothing of it until they heard a scream and a stab, in which the two of them, which was Bork and Arden, addressed the scene, whereas Aegis did what he needed to do and keep the crowd distracted. So, while Bork and Arden dealt with the guards, Aegis uh, razzled and dazzled the crowd with some horrifying stories of war. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and doing so, Bork and Arden then interrogated, or, well, Arden interrogated one of the soldiers while the other one ran off with the body, in which Bork thought he was going the right direction, but it turns out he went the complete wrong way. Um, after getting more information, after Arden got more information from one of the guards, he found out that the man went the opposite way with the dead body. After a little bit of rummaging around, they both ended up meeting up with the man. After... Uh, Bork crossed, uh, passed by the crowd and then used Dimension Door to get closer to the man who was running away with the body. And uh, Arden caught up through the alleyways. They then proceeded to talk to the man. Uh, they, Bork used suggestion to tell him to stop. Uh, they talked and discussed with the man, asked him what he was doing, knew he was alive, so now they are taking him to prison if I'm correct, and Aegis switched his story from brutal death horrifying stories to his nice time on the mountainside. <laughs> <laughs> and thus we lift off there as after Quinn ran up to the stage and yelled at the crowd saying everybody is going to die. And that's where we will continue the adventure from. The crowd now silent. Um, at this point... Um, Bork and Arden, you are currently taking him to the prison, right? Yep. Okay. Royal rag stuff in his mouth. So he can't bullshit anymore. I'll ask uh, Arden if he thinks we should split up. Like, one of us takes the prisoner and then the other just goes back to the stage. I'll head back to the stage. You're better at talking to people anyway. Sounds good. Plus, Quinn might be there and I think he might be a little too gentle on him. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't worry about it, uh, and I'm going to make my way to the stage. <laughs> All right, you head off to the stage, Arden, <laughs> Bork, and you take them prisoner. Yeah. All right, we are going to go with you first. Okay. So, um, you're just holding a prisoner over your shoulder, are you dragging him? Uh, I would have probably tied his hands behind his back and put the egg in his mouth, and then also put the uh, like sack with the body over my shoulder or his shoulder or something like that. How strong are you? Uh, moderate. Like I'll have ten. you roll strength for me. Okay. Because you can take two medium-sized bodies on your shoulders. Uh, just strength or like... Uh, strength. Oh, yeah, just eight. Eight? Uh, yeah, Sally, you can't find that you can't carry any of the bodies over your shoulder. The weight okay. is too much and it just pulls down on your bone. Okay, so He's I'll... A orc. Ooh, that's a strength. It's yeah. not a strong one. Yeah, so I'll just, like, tuck on a rope around, like, his dress or whatever, and, like, as a leash, and just put the body over his shoulder. Okay, that works. Um, yeah, you have successfully created a temporary slave. <laughs> uh, so, as you're journeying towards the prison, you know, it's not far. Yeah. Uh, you reach there moderately soon uh, to find the two same... Guards guarding the gate, the entryway into there. Both which they say nothing as you approach. Uh, I told them that this guard just murdered a man in cold blood. And that I'd like to have him arrested. 
Very well. I've got the dead body. He's got the dead body with him right here. And I show them the bag. Very well. Uh, The guards step aside and open the gate for you. Um, As you walk through, you go up the stairs. Uh, This is about a two-level facility that you're entering here. And you go to the second level in which you meet with what looks like to be a headmaster. He's a goblin now. Um, He's behind a desk that has bars on it with a little opening. And he currently is just up there on uh, the counter with his shoulders up. Uh, There's guards that are very walking through the halls and doing their business. Uh, A couple of other uh, goblins as well who seem to be doing paperwork and such. Yeah, so I pretty much just tell this goblin dude that this dude was an accomplice to a murder and was trying to get, get rid of the evidence, as you could say. And uh, the body of the one he and his partner killed is right here. It was in cold blood, and I'd like to have this man arrested. Hmm. There's quite a lot to take in. I was not expecting that to happen today. But... It makes sense. It checks out very well. Um, He'll gesture to a guard, uh, which he will come and take the prisoner from you. To go put him. All right, well, we're just going to throw him in a cell for now. Um, oh, I forgot the body. Just to another guard, they take the body. Okay. Goes off in a separate direction. Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, we will put him on trial. We will look at the evidence, and if it checks out, he will be arrested, and we will punish him severely then. Uh, if it does not check out, then we will punish you severely for false accusation. That's... As you wish. Alright, um, my... before you leave, I'm gonna need you to sign a waiver saying that we are allowed to do so. Alright? <laughs> you see, just slide a piece of paper and then an ink and quill. Okay. He signs it. <laughs> no, you're a sign, or you would read that. Okay, I. Read fine print. Yeah, can I read like fine print? <laughs> yeah, you can. I feel like more you know, should read the fine print. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, the. The premise of what the whole entire page is saying is it's saying what he stated, that if your accusation is false, then you will be arrested and put under prosecution. However, the fine print says uh, you will not be trialed. You'll just be executed as a liar. Okay, I'll bring this to the guard's attention, but I don't think this is right, being that this man is having a trial. Well, yes, he's having a trial right now, but if the trial uh, fails and he's not found guilty, then we will and hold you accountable. And who would find him guilty or not? That would be up to the judge. And who's this judge? The king. We, my partner Arden was saying that, uh, what's the, uh, robot thing? Or cloud thing, Queen. Quinn, yeah. that um, Quinn might not be able to be trusted in this, that he might have a hand in this. Boy, you are full of heavy accusations today. I'm, ju- I'm just saying what I have seen. Do you have any evidence to support this claim? Do you have the book? I have the book. He has a book. Uh, I can bring evidence later. <sighs> Very well, all right. For now, you are fine. We will make you sign the waiver. Um, you are pretty high up in the categories, of course. We will give you the benefit of the doubt this one time. Um, bring us that book, though. That yes. is important. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. You're free to go. He gestures. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't sign the waiver. Yeah, you didn't sign the waiver. And then I just hurry back to try to get back the siege. Okay. Uh, soon enough, you rush there. And uh, in doing so, while you guys are making your way back... They just, you hear after Quinn says, we're all going to die because there has been a murder in the streets. Uh, I've walked, have I reached there? Or? At this point, you would have just reached now. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I push people aside and I say, Quinn Cloudfang, <laughs> you're a liar and a murderer. And I start walking up towards him. The whole audience. Publicly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, hold on. How? (laughs) I pull out the book and I say, this is his assassination target list. I saw him order men to kill another innocent civilian. I found the dead body. We chased him through the streets. And now you're trying to make it out like you're an innocent. You're just being a racist. (laughs) (laughs) Shut it, trash bin. You're a liar. And I don't like liars. You're a murderer. And I hate murderers. 
and I'll kill you myself. <laughs> and I start uh, away quickly closer. the crowd begins to start chattering with each other, <laughs> yeah. having this newfound news. Uh, Quinn says, uh, can I see the book? I, I hold the book up in the air, and I say, you're not getting this damn thing from me. That's fine. No, bastard. I, don't, I don't need it from you. I just need you to come over here, open it, so I can see the writing. Oh, hell, I'm going near you. <laughs> well, your friend is right here. <laughs> I don't trust this fucking guy at all, man. <laughs> there are guards everywhere. The people are watching. What? What could possibly be the worst thing that could happen? I walk forward though. I do step closer. All right, and you get closer. All right, just open the book. He I open his it. hands remain behind his back. I stand back about fifteen feet and open the book. Everyone, I have an announcement. This is not my book. That's not my writing. You're lying. As he pulls out a little uh, pieces of parchment from notes he wrote, signed by the king. This is my writing, and he hands it over to you. Feel free to inspect that. Inspect both the book and his writing. And you find drastically that the writing is different. The paper that he has is signed notions of the king to... It's the contract to manage you guys, and it has his stamp and his seal on it. Whereas the book, his writing is different. You can lie, you can try and sway all these people, <laughs> but I know the truth. And I'm going to kill you myself. You just didn't like war for us. You're trying to escape from this contract, aren't you? I didn't want to do some stupid speech anyway. If I have to fight, <laughs> I'll fight. But I know the truth, and you can't hide it from me. He places his hand out. Oh, please, please. There's no need for that. Think of what you mean. Uh, think of, well, just... I turn to the I'll crowd and I thoughts. say, Who would you trust anyway? <laughs> Who would you trust? I saved your lives. <laughs> you were one of three that saved these pretty people's lives. You may not like me, but I'm not a liar. I ain't calling you a truther. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my pen? So. I'm putting the, the book back in my pocket, though. I let him have it. Okay. All right. Uh, so you had your men kill someone in an alley and then try to hide the body. We stopped them. Bork has him in the... is carrying one of them away to the prison right now. You have no proof that that's linked to me. Why would I do such a thing? The guard told me so. You should really hire guys with bigger stomachs. Because he squealed like a little pig. You do realize just that like you could have been lying, correct? Man, what evidence do you have to really support such a claim? Really, do I see the guard I interrogated? Is he here? No? Okay. Uh, well, we have the guard in custody, so... Humans will really say anything to fit their own agenda. At this point, you are right. God! Damn it, ages! <laughs> <laughs> Save your prejudice for a time when it... Not in the way. Yes, but everyone calm down. Look, we have a speech to go through. and I've made my speech. <laughs> All right, very well. You do not have to say anything. But, um... This orc, orc will finally make its way yes. to the stage. Look, it is our other hero. Look, everyone, our hero has arrived. I turn to Bork and I say, Can you help me with this guy? Uh, what, what's happening? Quinn, he's trying to make himself off some kind of hero. Told us all we're gonna die. Why are true. we all gonna die, Quinn? Well, there was a body found in the streets. Yes, I found that body. One of your city guard. Are you, are you part of the city guard? Are you like the. I one work who for the king, them? man. This is right hand man. So you help organize the city guard? No, that no? would be the guard captain. Okay, well. Or then the king. It's between them two. I mostly deal with the people. You yeah. take charge of everybody. You're second in command, right hand man. Right hand man. So you have. Enormous sway over the city guard. Perhaps. Don't play it off. But that doesn't mean I abuse it. Either way, uh, one of the city, gu city guards, and I'm making sure everyone can hear this, Capital. One of the city guards murdered. Well, actually, two of the city guards worked together to murder a innocent man, and the other one of was trying to, as someone would say, hide the evidence. Uh, but we. We caught them just in time and took the one who was going to hide the evidence to the prison with the body as well. Well, there we go. We have the man in custody. Therefore, everyone, there's no need to worry. Our heroes have saved the day once again. I don't think that's I'm about what to, we did. Uh, the crowd I'm, begins I'm to cheer up and clap and uproar. As they're clapping, I walk up and I say, oh, we're not done. Yeah. Fair enough. 
Um, and before anyone could say anything else, you are all interrupted by the sound of horns uh, coming from behind you. As you look, you see the King's Guard, which are uh, soldiers that are dressed in full uh, adamantine plate armor, uh, coated in gold. And they have uh, basically the wheel two-handed weapons only, so two-handed axes, two-handed swords, also plated in gold. And they are currently surrounding the king who's approaching, that you know to be Ronald Drake. Uh, was there, uh, am I too late for, to have my speech, to have our speech, or? We will still have our speeches, uh, but the king has arrived, everyone must bow. Speeches don't matter now. And he watches, uh, Quinn bows, and everyone else bows, and the crowd, the guards kneel. I don't bow? What? (laughs) I turn around like, what's wrong with you people? This man's a murderer. <laughs> the point, the yeah. king is approaching. We should be respectful. The king should know that he's hired a murderer. The king Respect will... your elders. And I kind of push my hand down and make you bow. I'm not bowing. The king will learn of... We will tell the king of the murder. And if we can get information from the guards again and stuff like that, then if it happens that this man, or I guess a uh, cons... Uh, construct. construct, or... Wait... Or yeah, Forge. 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 It's a contract. It's guilty, then we will deal with that in time. As the king approaches down the same uh, pathway made for all of you, uh, he is a 59-year-old male human. He has uh, short curled blonde hair, and he has his crown upon his head with many jewels surrounding it. Uh, he wears a long, uh, light blue cape that seems to slightly glow. Along that, he wears a breastplate that has... Uh, it's gold coated and has an inscription of a dragon on it, uh, as well as some words on the bottom part that seem to be in draconic. Um, his greaves, uh, his bracers are well or gold, and then all in between that is a chainmail. He's pretty much always dressed for battle to show to his people that he is not afraid to fight for them. Uh, not bowing, and I'm jumping off. We're on a platform, right? Yeah, you're on a platform. Yeah. It's about 50 feet up. I jump down. And I will start to walk away, and I say, I don't associate myself with this crap. And I leave. You got hired by the king. I thought he was an honorable man. Now that I know his right-hand man's a sick piece of crap, I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm the, king, the king notices that you try to leave, and you uh, you uh, bork and uh, Aegis watches. He raises his hand and gestures it in your direction, Arden. And guards begin to center in on your position and block you from leaving. So much for this being an honor. And as the guard's person like, I'm sorry, sir, but you must return to the I stage. cast Far Step, and I teleport 60 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> as a bonus action, I cast Far Step, and I, I teleport 60 feet away. All right. Into an uh, alley, and I run. <laughs> before the guard finishes the sentence, you teleport to the edge of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and you run. I run away. You this run is clearly away. a trap, and I'm not going to fall for it. Uh, you begin to run towards the prison area. Oh, that's the area that he was that Bork was heading before. You're heading in that general direction. Yeah. On the run. Uh, what do you? Where do you want to go to? Where do you want to run to? What's your plan? I'm heading to the library. The place the I broke into. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not far then. All right. I change so. the guy. I'm going to return his hand, and uh, I'm going to ask for a favor. Okay. Um. So yeah, you make your way there, and doing so, the king immediately looks uh, stunned, but seems to shrug it off and make his way up to the stage. Hello, my heroes. How are you on this fine day? Excellent, your liege. How are you self? How is yourself? Oh, I am doing <laughs> very well. in his eyes when he has to talk to a human. <laughs> I, I do very I well. You, you, you honor us with the ceremony. Oh, please, um, please. And we're all forever grateful. I'm sorry, uh, my friend Ar- our friend Arden had to leave. He was not feeling himself or well. No, that's quite all right. He is more than welcome to do what he wishes. And we happen to have learned of a murder that happened just a few minutes ago. I understand. Yes, Quinn. Right, he's the one involved here. Uh, there's the possibility that he could be involved. That's well, what the guards that we interrogated have had said. I'm here to tell you to confirm it. Quinn, as he gestures to Quinn, this man has murdered many people. He has corrupted the guard, and I found out through my daughter. Captain of the guard, 
who has provided me proof and intel of Quinn's treachery. I will have the gods now arrest this man and take him to be executed later in the day. I apologize, everyone, for such corruption going on in your city's safety. This is unacceptable. I'm not here, but even if he was, Arden would still be so suspicious. He doesn't yeah. trust any of these people anymore. <laughs> Just saying. <All> right. <laughs> and he watches the guards then handle Quinn and take him away, and he does not say a word as he leaves. This is so suspicious. I'll, I'll kind of say, shall there be a trial? Uh, like a public trial? And the information and intel we have, we have more than enough to suffice that Quinn is a dangerous man. So there will be a trial then? No, he like will be should. executed later today. There's no need for a trial. He's too dangerous to be kept alive. Orknork seems very not okay with this. Like, he's not saying anything like that, but mm -hmm. he, he can see on his face that he's not okay with... Do my words trouble you? Uh, no, my liege. Uh, I just believe that every man should have a trial. Of course, very well. Well, you don't become king without making hard decisions. My... <sighs> The decree still stands, um, but he will be done. It will be done at night. As you wish. It will be done at night, and no one will be around to see, except you folks, myself, other guys. We don't want the people seeing this. It does not provide a good image. As you wish. All the people already know. They know, sure, but they don't need to see the action happen. Can I roll, like, history to see if this is, like, a normal thing? <laughs> like... <laughs> non-public executions. Yeah. Uh, that's just a 10. 10? Or actually, no, that's a 17. Oh, uh, well, you know they're not common. Wait, they don't happen a lot. Mostly, it's, oh. there's always a trial. However, every so often, depending, it's, the trials that have been done just without a trial, straight execution, were to people who went on basically a mass killing spree. Okay. Have been doing that because they are considered too high of a threat. And, like, the executions were never public? Never public, no. They were okay. always done at night. Uh, but there was only about two others that you know of okay. that have happened like that. Well, um, I'm sorry, everyone, but the speech is clearly ruined now. Um, I will ask everyone that they go back to their jobs, their daily doings, and uh, we'll try to schedule one for another time. And uh, immediately everyone begins to disperse. Now, I'm very sorry about this for the both of you. No, uh, we're sorry about it too. I never wanted you to think that uh, there was any corruption going on in here. I did not know that Quinn was doing such deeds. Of course. But my daughter stays true to me, and she helped me through this. So, do you mind me asking how your daughter figured this out? She gave her life for it. I'm sorry to hear that. She's gone now. To get this intel, she... Went to a town not far from here called Northhelm, and from there she found uh, the thieves' guild. After doing what I, you know, how I raised her, she managed to sneak her way in and use a disguise spell to get through the people. She ended up managing to sneak her way into the leader's cabin, in which she found all the manuscripts and papers that stated what Quinn was doing and how he made a deal with the Thieves' Guild to... So it wouldn't go back to Quill, he hired the Thieves' Guild to then hire other people. Basically to corrupt the guard from the inside without it being linked to him. But on my daughter's return, she was stopped by a patrol of the Thieves' Guild and... Well, they got the best of her. I'm sorry to hear that your daughter did a great honor for the city. Be proud. Thank you. Like I said, I'm terribly sorry that you had to deal with this. Quinn was very well trusted under mine. It's a real shame to see they turned out such a way. Anyways, I have other business I need to attend to. I have mourning to attend to and a funeral to arrange. So I will leave you two to your business. Maybe you should go find your friend, uh, wherever he went. Yes, of course. Um, Thank you, my liege. And the king, looking just very kind of distraught now, turns around and walks away. Stay strong. <laughs> After so, we'll go to you, uh, Arden. You race yourself to the bookstore, in which you... Do you just go right through the door? Yeah, I go right in. I'm not trying. Right in. You go right through the door, the door opens up, and you find the changeling 
Malphite. That's my name, right? Yeah, it was Malphite. Matthias. Oh, Matthias? Malphite no, was a different guy. Matthias uh, it's currently seems to be actually organizing his store. He seems to have gotten the whole bottom floor sorted out. Uh, you see the sword with the like three books jammed in it is like on the counter uh, off to the side. And you can hear him scruffling around in the back. I uh, close the door behind me and I lock it. And I reach into my bag and I pull up the hand and I walk up and I put it down on the table and I said, This is yours. I need to stay here for a while. Nice turns around and he's. Uh, what? Uh, where, did, where did you acquire this? Your basement. You broke into my shop? It was a game. Oh, with that absolutely appalling dwarf man, right? Yeah, yeah but I've got a cool three ring out of it. Times. I struggle to hold back my gambling times. Here's the important part is you can have your hand back. And he takes it. Away. Thank you. What is it anyway? It's a symbol of a god. A god named Bane. I had to study it for a little bit. I had no clue what it meant. But that's Bane. Yes, that's about all I know about it. Made a bit of a spectacle. I think I need to lie low for a while. Well, seeming as you return the hand you stole, fine, I, I'll grant you a night here. Thanks. I'm I appreciate stay in that. the top with all the books. Kind of accused Quinn Cloudfang of murder in front of hundreds. Quinn? You accused the right hand man of the king of murder? And I pull out the book and I put it down and I said, found this on one of his guards. Whew, he They're like going around killing people. Pulls on his cloth outwards from his neck. Whew, uh, that's a lot of news. Um, Why are you telling this guy I'm bookie? Because I trust the changeling man. All right, yes, you can stay up front. I know what it's like to be in a bit of a situation like this. Once I was between a group of Goliaths, a war tribe, and uh, I accidentally slept with one of their wives. And oh, one I found out, and I had to lie low. And so I found uh, the city. Uh, but that was when it was just still being built. Uh, about halfway in its construction, and I illegally hid in a barrel for seven days. Seven days? Yes. Can I insight that? There's no way you hid in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So I had no reason to. What is that? Is it a 16 or a 6? I think 16. Paul, I think 16. 24. Yeah, he's fibbing. <laughs> he's making it up. But can I trust him? Yeah, you can trust him. You don't get any sense that he is a uh, Batman. Yeah. He's a big storyteller, that's why. Yeah, he likes to storytell okay. a lot. Uh, I'll ask him about the... I'll be like, uh, when I was in here, I saw that sword. Not gonna lie, hurt my ears. Yeah, um... It's not the sword that made the screeching, it's the books. The uh, books? Yeah, the sword's fine. It's a normal sword. But these books, are, I don't know yet what they are. But, uh, yeah. When I came into the shop, there was nothing but screaming... Uh, and so I stuck a sword in them, and it stopped. I still have to study them. But I don't want to remove the sword. I don't want you to remove it either. I don't want to remove it either. I'll probably just throw it away somewhere. Uh, anyways, you're more than welcome to stay here. I have food upstairs. Uh, you can make bedding with the books, whatever. I'm going to fix it later. I appreciate the help. Of course, of course. If anyone comes by, I'll just tell them i never seen you. I hope you do that. <laughs> I will, I will. All right, well. I don't really like this city right now. Probably going to leave in the morning. I don't like this city either. What Why don't you leave? Well, I need money. Or else I'll starve. I don't have the power like I used to. I'm not young anymore. My bones don't look the same. Can't sleep with black women anymore? No, no. That was a chapter I left behind. I don't think he was telling the truth about that either, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I got a lot of work to do, so feel free to walk around and do what you wish. Okay. Read some uh, books. I would love to look around and read some of those books. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you go upstairs and you find there's just plethora and plethora of books on the shelves. But yeah, no, my plan is just to hide out here for a while. Uh, I don't know what happened with the king or anything, and I assume that I'm kind of a big shit for what I did. So I'm just going to lay low and then probably make a break for it eventually. Okay. I'll see I'll find you two again, but I mean, well, mostly work. <laughs> <laughs> it just kind of pisses me off but yeah I don't want to leave but we saying goodbye so but right. for the night I'll probably spend here and I'll just read through sounds good Bork you just uh, what you like to do I'd just be trying to find Arden well survival I'd help 13 
Maybe because I'm just following Borg. <laughs> 16. Um, <laughs> you know the general direction he ran off yeah. in, but you, you can't find any more clues. But as you guys approach the scene, uh, Aegis, you find that there's like... Let's see you in the... You find there's various like scrapings along the floor, rock that has been pushed, like pebbles that have been pushed out of the way, and footprints leading in a direction that match uh, Arden's. Similarly. Okay. Okay, so I'll follow them. Okay. Um, you guys follow it for about 120 feet, and then uh, you approach a busy street, and uh, which is in the market square, and uh, it's, uh, you, it's impossible to figure out which steps are whose now. There's too much scuffling. People are still roaming around, going back to their shops. What do you think he might have wanted? Uh, hmm. Could be anywhere. Maybe. I did say I was going to return the hand. Just saying. You would remember that. If that helps. I'm going to roll to see if... Roll history. Yeah, history. Uh, 21. Yeah, you remember. I believe... You remember, too. It's possible you might be trying to... You turned the book, either that or maybe you went back to the tavern we were at or an inn or something like that. I think if the bookstore is nearby, we might as well check that out. That's a good possibility. All right, so, you go to the bookstore. Yeah. Um, you first. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. Can I inspect that ring along there? The ring yeah, ring? totally. I um, want to do like an arcana check. I forgot all about that. You. Uh, I stole that hand for a reason, so. Yeah, definitely do an arcana check. Okay. Sorry, guys. 16 plus 8, uh, 24. 24. Uh, you get a heavy offensive, offensive magical property to it, but it needs attunement. It, you get it's not cursed, though? Or? You don't get any sense of cursed magic here. I'll put it on my Just right. powerful, uh, heavy offensive magic. Okay, I'll put it on my right hand. Uh, as you put it on, you hear the stampede once again in your ears, and then it fades. Uh, and you also feel as though your fist has gotten dense and strong. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll spend my time there at 2D. Okay. Sorry, just uh, want to do that first. As Bork and Aegis approached and opened the door, you were greeted to a very tall, uh, six foot six Goliath man with the counter. I say hello there. Oh, what can I do for you? Uh, oh. We were told that this is the Changelings uh, named, what is his name again? Matthias. Matthias is Bixer. Matthias? No, he moved on. He actually wanted to continue traveling. I'm just gonna inside get like this so, is Matthias, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh Borkark is, isn't actually positive, but he thinks this might be Matthias. Where did you roll? Three. Uh plus oh inside I guess five. So five. Uh, yeah, you yeah. don't get the sense. Yeah. He's talking to the wife. I'm just kinda looking around. Due to talking to him and all that, you get yeah. the sense that he doesn't change much anymore. Okay. So you figure this might be possible. Yeah. Yeah, he just, um... He said he didn't really want to run a bookstore, but I love books myself, so I thought, why not buy it? Honestly, props this guy really had my back. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, he sold it pretty quick. So, uh, who are you both? Uh, my name is Borknork. Borknork? Borknork? Yeah, Borknork. Uh, Borknork. Yeah. All right, and you yourself? My name's Aegis. Aegis, so it's lovely to meet you all. Feel free to browse my shop. Upstairs is closed for now, though, due to renovations. Okay. Uh, but you can feel free to look in the back. We've got tons of books there. Can I see if I see the hand anywhere? Yeah, you do see the hand on okay. the counter still. Uh, it's right beside the sword with the book stab. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, have you seen our friend Ar Arden? He's a human. Uh, he must have been here recently. Because he just he said he was going to return that hand to No, I can't say I've seen him. I don't know any um, Arden, so to speak. Um, this hand is very nice. I do like it on the camera. <laughs> I'll pretend to peruse the book shelves, but then I'll be heading straight towards the stairs. Okay. So right. not really pretending oh, at all. Uh, stealth. Do I see the sword in the books too? You do. It's right beside okay. the hand. Uh, I'm going to talk to the guy at the bottom and try to detect magic on it. You definitely can. Four. Four. <laughs> okay. I wasn't really trying to be stealthy, but... Uh, as you shuffle your way to the stairs... Um, excuse me, I you can't go up there. I hope you know that. Oh, up here? Yeah, you know, it's, take it's closed for renovations. <laughs> up here is closed? Yes, up there. Oh. I'm just taking a quick look. I'll start heading up. No, 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 sir, I'm gonna ask that you don't go up there. Um, 
Shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I walk through the stairs. I even hear the footsteps. I heard them, so I walk over. I'm like, yeah, trash bat, trash bin over there was never really good with rules. And I start walking down the stairs. <laughs> oh, well, jig is up. Didn't anyway. take you guys long to find me. He watches the Goliath and shrinks down back to Matthias. Wasn't that hard oh to my find God. I could smell you from anywhere. <laughs> 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 Well, that didn't quite work out, did it? I walk up to the boss and say, I appreciate the effort. I tried my best. They're better than most guards would ever be, though, so... You definitely convinced me. Well, at least I still have some magic to my ability and skill. Well, Do you uh, mind if I uh, investigate this book with the sword in it? Like, oh, what, What's that about? Oh, uh, see... Don't remove the sword. If you move the sword, the books scream, and it sucks. Oh, it really does suck. <laughs> so um, you can you can deal with it just somewhere else. Yes, I will. Please get it. And really and well, without like t- taking the sword out, can I just cast identify on it? Yep. So if it's a magic item or some other magically imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them. Whether it requires attunement. And to use and how many charges it has, if any, you learn whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. Alright, uh, you understand that these are the three books of pain. One of them is all about the mental state of pain, one is about the physical state, and the other about the soul. Um, the, they're, they have a defense mechanism that is the screeching. So when, um, for example, when they're not stabbed with a sword to embed, embed pain, right, in the books themselves, then they'll keep screaming and screaming and ringing in your ears. Now, the only people that have been known to handle this are demon-type creatures. Okay. Hellish beings who specialize in pain. I'll just relay this info to uh, the, this, group. the group, including the changeling. Okay. Oh, well, that's... It's quite scary. <laughs> Books um, of pain. What's wrong with humans? Well, I, it seems like it <laughs> seems like these weren't created by humans, but demons or devil folk. Books like this need to be destroyed. Uh they honestly they uh, they seem to be have a lot of information in them and could be helpful to someone. Hopefully not to like murderers or evildoers. But it's possible to learn something from them. Dark magic is a stain on this world. Much like humans. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore him. <laughs> is this dark magic? Uh, is it dark ma- magic? Very dark magic. Okay. Extremely dark. Very cursed, necromantic kind of stuff. Seems as it is, but... I say we burn. Once again, you can learn a lot from different types of magic. They're your books. It's up to you. Uh, hey, 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 I just bought the shop. Uh, feel free, take them. Take them and leave. Are you sure? I don't want screaming in my shop. Um, it's very annoying. I say we burn them. Please, by all means, burn them. I, I'd love to take the books. Would, would it be possible to just put a dagger in the books instead, instead of the sword, just so that it's like more compact? Are you asking the thighs for me? You. Me? Yeah. Um, or you can always find out. Yeah. So, uh, what check do you want then? Uh, well, I'll just say for a fact that, uh... You just pull the sword out and try and put a dagger and see if that So works. you take a dagger, and, uh, these books are quite thick, but... Also, they've been around a long time, so the center of them are kind of mm-hmm. squished in. Uh, you rip out the sword, and immediately everyone hears the screeching, blaring pain that almost knocks you on the ground. Um, but for... In, a, in about the second you're about to slam it down, you're, like, having to push harder mm-hmm. and harder as it gets tougher and tougher to try and get the dagger in there until finally you manage to sink it in and the screeching stopped. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, my friends. As long as that's the last I hear of it. You would want to keep a book that screams. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we need to get out of town. I don't trust this place at all. That's going to be kind of tricky. The place has been locked down right here. Locked down? Yeah, because uh, the, of the invading force out in the border, uh, they have tightened their guards around the cities, the towns, all sorts of stuff. Put more patrols out on the pathways leading to each one between them. Some places are corrupt. We have to stay to see Quinn's execution. Yes, Quinn's Ar- execution? Arden. 
And uh, the reason why the king came around was because his daughter apparently found info about Quinn and his evil doings. So the king is calling for Quinn's execution. Where's his daughter? Uh, she died, unfortunately. She died? That's what the king said. <laughs> you guys will believe anything these freak politicians tell you. He seemed very sad and very depressed on the matter and... All I'm saying is, if your second in command orders guards to kill innocent billions, this place is corrupt to its core. I want out. I don't trust that king, I don't trust Quinn, and I don't believe his daughter's dead. I agree that you were correct on Quinn, but he is the king. Man, you got, you're a piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you hear the bell of the door ding ding, and as you look, you see Matthias is just walking out. <laughs> what? He just walks out. walking out of the building and he walks by the window. He looks very stoic. And as you look through the window, you see that there seems to be red light shining through it. Why? I told you this place is fucked to its core. <laughs> can I do an arcana check? Yeah, I would like to as well. Yeah, you can. I'll slowly start walking outside. I rolled a 22. 13. Uh, you don't have a grasp on what's going on. You have the sense. You, you, you suddenly feel, as you're trying to sense what this arcane magic could be, you start feeling dread and sadness along with um, growing anger as the, as the sadness is beginning to turn into anger inside your body. It's from the books. Until the point where you just need to stop. Is it from the books? Do I think there's danger right now? Like, you definitely think, think there's danger. Do you think Matthias is in danger? Uh, you think something's going wrong for sure. Yeah. I rush out. You think there's danger. He helped me. I help him. End of story. I, I kick the door open and I grab Matthias. All right. Yeah, poor um, Yeah, I'm walking out. All right, you all rush out through the door, and you see that the sun has turned red. And uh, everyone in the city seems to be stoic, standing still, and just walking in random patterns and directions all over the place. Shopkeepers just dropped what they're doing, and they're walking into a wall. Um, and then when you hit the wall, they turn and they walk somewhere else. The fuck is wrong with this place? And you notice that... Uh, the guards are now statues. Guards that were posted in the area and said just become stone statues. Do you, do we feel anything like different in us? As the light anything hits changes? you, you all feel that sense of anger and like aggression, like you need to start punching stuff, although it's faint still, but you can feel it slightly growing slowly. Can I? Did it seem like more so out here than inside? Definitely. You didn't you two didn't feel it inside. Okay. I take Matthias. Why is back the shirt and I drag him back inside? Yeah, I'm going back inside the store. Okay, as you all go back inside the store and you drag Matthias back in, um, the door closes and uh, Matthias just falls to the ground. Uh, is he okay? Uh, he's unconscious right now. It's okay, but you, you'll wake he's up. He's fine, and... he's breathing, yeah. He's just. Alright, I lock the door again. Alright. I turn and I say, You really want to stay still? Not so sure anymore. Not like we have a choice. I think we should stay in this shop for a while until at least something passed over. Everyone roll perception. Oh, that, that's gold, 17. baby. I got a 22. 22? 17? Yeah. 12. 12. All right. Um, collectively, I'll say, yeah, you all see. Uh, we'll go in the order of Arden, you see it first, then Bork, you see it right after, and Aegis after you see your friends are looking that way. You all end up looking through the window, and you see a figure about 80 feet out on the edge of the square on the opposite side. Uh, and he stands to be uh, about 80 feet tall currently. Um, he's tall. All you see is a bald head, a pale gray skin. He seems to have um, scars across his face in the form of an X. The armor he wears, he wears a dark breastplate that spikes come off the shoulders. Um, his bracers as well have many spikes, but they seem to go in all sorts of directions and twist around. And his left hand, he holds a giant mace. At the end of it, it looks like it has uh, blades all around, uh, about six blades all around, and then on those blades, it looks like to be swords attached, and then on those swords is daggers attached. That's what it looks like. Um, is this a stone giant? And he stands there, and his eyes glowing fiercely, like a fiery red, and it pierces your guys' eyes. Looking into them, but as you look into them, you feel anger grow immensely and quickly until you have to look away. No, I look away, yeah. <laughs> and the creature uh, being stands there. 
And you begin to see that the sky's clouds have went dark and black, and that there's red lightning energy crackling through them. Would I have any inkling as to what this is? Is it a lingering monster? Is it a type of giant? Like, what is it? You have no idea yet. No idea. The figure there stands and watches you. I draw the blinds. Okay. Um, then you take down the wood blinds and start folding downwards. Casting the light out. What kind of freak show is this? Where are we giving? Uh, you can no longer see. It's completely dark in the room. Not you two, but... Okay, can I light a candle? Or... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll start lighting the candles. So, uh, and uh, I'll keep an eye on my thighs and say, we'll rest here tonight. As soon as he's better, we'll take him and we're leaving. I didn't sign up for this. Hell, I didn't even sign up for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you begin to hear sounds of war coming from outside the wall. As uh, It's like horses galloping, swords clanging together. The screams of soldiers getting stabbed or wounded. They need me out there. <laughs> uh, you also feel aggression dissipate once you close the blinds. Bartmark like has no idea. Uh, like he's conflicted on what to do because being like the good, lawful good he is, he wants to go and help out and stuff okay. like that. But he knows that it would be suicide. The war it's reached the city. There's no saving it. Suddenly you hear bang as the hand on the counter fell to the ground. The statue hand you returned. I, uh, I throw my last oil rag. <laughs> I cover the hand. And I say, uh, I, start, I, say uh, I say it again. I say, we wait till Matthias wakes up. We take our rest. And then we leave. Are you we're, able, no, we're no good to anyone dead. Are you able to cast silence? No. Do, 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 do. You, you can see the, the the hand statue is like trembling under your rag on the ground. I step it's on just it. kind of shaking all over the place. As you step on it, it I stops. I twist the boot my heel. Like, As you try to break it, it doesn't get okay. It's a strong statue. Okay. But I hold it there. I'm like, two things. One, keep an eye on this fucking head. It's freaking me out. <laughs> and two, anyone else got a better idea? I'm going to peek through the blinds. The being is still <laughs> staring right at you. It seems every time you look through, he's staring directly at you. But you see the people still just walking in all directions. You don't see any signs of war, but you hear it. How far away is this? Uh, the man is about 80 feet away. Uh, can I cast Reverse Scrappy on him? You could. What? Yeah, so yes. uh, this... <laughs> This spell reverses gravity in a 50 foot radius, 100 foot high cylinder, centered on a point within range. All creatures and objects that are somehow anchored to the ground in the area fall upward and reach the top of the area when cast the spell. A creature can make a deck saving throw to grab onto a fixed object it can reach, thus avoiding the fall. If some uh, solid object, such as the ceiling, is encountered in this fall, falling objects and creatures strike it just as they would during a uh, normal downward fall. If an object or creature reaches the top of the area without striking anything, it remains there, oscillating slightly for the duration. At the end of the duration, affected objects and creatures fall back down. Okay, so what save does he have to make? Uh, it would be a uh, deck save and throw to grab onto a fixed object it can reach. And you said that this is in a 50 foot radius? Yeah, uh, 50 foot radius, 100 foot tall cylinder. cylinder. What's the range? Uh, 100 feet. Wow. What's your save DC? What is that? Uh, 17. Oh, that's a good one. 17? Yeah. And this would also probably hit some of the... He's pulling a lot of dice back there. Some of the army from the other side. He right. There's no actual army, right? We're, We're just hearing it. So oh, it's all on her head. There's only that giant. Oh, that's what I saying. didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay, so only three succeed, and those are all civilians. Um, about eight other civilians uh, are lifted up off the ground, and uh, you watch as the hulking figure also lifts off the ground, but quickly takes his mace and jams it into the ground and pulls himself down. Dead. And then. Uh, try. As he widens his eyes to you, the glow even fiercer with fieriness. And as you both see, his eyes begin to do the same. Your eyes? You suddenly feel like you can't control your anger anymore. I knocked Bork It's beginning out. to spiral out of control. Um, you feel like you just need to start breaking and throwing things around. 
I did not have to work out. <laughs> like, yeah, as soon as I see his eyes start glowing, I, I'm a suspicious person by nature, yeah. and I'm just gonna knock him out right away. Uh, that's, that's if you want, I will. Hmm? That will end the spell, though. So, like, just try. What would happen? I will give you the chance. Wait, it's concentration, you said? Yeah. Okay, then you wouldn't have a chance. Uh, so, you wanna knock him out? I don't wanna hit him. You, you could just tilt the blinds. I'll try that. I'll close the blinds. All right, you close the blinds again, and uh, your eyes, the color then dissipates away. Okay. You don't feel like you need to break things anymore, throw a tantrum. But that was powerful what you felt. Very dark. Then from outside, you hear the bodies hitting the ground again. Oh no, they're still up in the air. Oh, okay. For now, they're up there. Oh, this is bad news. I didn't realize there are civilians like, right by him. Oh yeah, there's civilians walking in all oh. sorts of directions. And, um... Try your best. Sometimes you gotta make a little collateral damage to get a job done. You hear Matthias waking up. Uh, uh, oh. What happened? Honestly, I we can't. don't know. Some bad shit. At out. this what point, is... you should stick with us. Why, 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 why are my blinds closed? Because you tried to walk into a wall. Excuse me. Uh, I, I, I just inform him, like, this sky's red. 80 foot tall giant with eyes that are red that make everyone angry. He walked out there in a trance. Even Bork almost turned. Nonsense, nonsense. Let me have a look through the window. I grab him by the scruff of his shirt and I throw him back away from the window and I say... He slams into the counter. Yeah. For your own sake. And for our sakes. Keep those damn blinds closed. I suddenly feel very threatened. Uh... Not threatening you. Saving your life. Right. There is terrible, terrible stuff happening out there. You passed out for ten minutes and you missed the apocalypse. <laughs> I guess so, though. Why is... Where, where's the statue? I'm still standing. Oh no, I stepped off of it. <laughs> is it on it's the floor still? It's not on the counter anymore. Is it on the floor still? Uh, as you go and check, you find that it is not on the floor anymore. <sighs> it's like a and your rag is just left there. Can I do a perception check so if I can see it? Yeah. Plus three. Oh, no, okay. 17. Perception right? Yeah. I got a 23. Just 13. 13. Um, no, none of you spot the hand. I pick my thighs up. I put them on my shoulder. I'm very <laughs> fond of them now, so I'm not letting him get hurt. And I um, say, oh, okay. everyone keep their eyes open. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. I'm going to take a look outside. No, I just said no. <laughs> no one's going outside. I'm going to use my shield as like a uh, blind. Blind, okay. Don't open that door. <laughs> as, as I'm grabbing the door handle and opening it. Don't open that door, are you insane? And then I walk out. <laughs> you open the door, and you walk out, and you have your shield blinding from the figure. Uh, you feel fine, but you hear the sounds of war much okay. louder now. And the people are, seem to be leaving the area. It seems they have a direction to go now. It's just away from this area. I'll close the door behind me, and I'll start walking down the street towards the, the giant. You need to tell him to come back inside. He doesn't listen to mind. This figure is huge. Classifies as huge. Ages. Ages. <laughs> as you keep Ages, come back. stepping come. before, step after step, you hear your friends calling you back. Ages, come back. We need you. This is too dangerous. We can't lose you, Ages. No one else has a shield. We need to do some scouting. What's there to scout? There's a giant man in the fucking courtyard. We can't stay in this building forever. But if we're going to leave, we have to be smart about it. That's why I'm scouting ahead. <laughs> As you're walking, your God. voice is quiet. Your friend's voice is dampened God. from the yeah. distance. Uh, until finally you begin to hear the breathing of the being. And uh, it's, it's very, very low. And... Are the civilians walking towards him? or like They're all dispersed. They're pretty much there. There's a couple that are still leaving, but most of them are gone now. I can't pinpoint where there's... The sound of fighting is coming from, it's just all around. All around you, it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. What do you two do? Borking. So, the uh, reverse gravity spell is about to end, so once it does end, I'll use my reaction to cast Featherfall. Okay. To I save the civilians. How many are there? There's uh, about eight of them that are up there. Eight. Yeah. And they're I'm 80 feet away. A roll investigation for me. Yeah, they're eighty feet away. I yeah, I took an, uh, I have Matthias over one shoulder and I have my a dagger on the other, and I'm looking for that stupid hand. 
Okay. I'll be right back. What? <laughs> I go out, and the moment re- uh, reverse gravity ends, I just cast Feather Fall on World 17. 17. Um, you go into the back though. room, and uh, as you're scuffling through books, you take a moment to stop. And then you hear books to your left that are scuffling around. And as you look over there, you see the hand is bolting it out the back. I throw my dagger at it. No. No, actually. uh, I cast Mold Earth. Mold Earth? Okay. And I make two hands, and I clasp them around it. All right, so the wooden panels of the floor, along with the dirty ground beneath it, then come up in two hand shapes and claw down... The statue. And that's a cantrip, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's and it holds it in place. All right. I that's I believe it's concentration. Uh, oh, no, it's just instantaneous. And up to fucking... It's changed last for one hour. Okay, yeah, so like, it'll just stay there. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not going anywhere. And I turn back to Bork, and I'm like, neither are you. Get back inside. Are you crazy? I'm already up. At this point, Bork has yeah. gone out the door. God just damn it! <laughs> so I look sh- back at nothing. I sheath my dagger and I put the thighs back down. And uh, I, you close the door behind you, right? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just lean up against, lean up against the bookshelf and I wait and I keep an eye on the front door, like an intense eye on the front door, like I'm not letting anything come in. Seeing that, and I only went as close as I needed to to cast for the ball. All right. Six feet. As you both are out there, you feel like there's fiery winds that are vortexing throughout the place. The sounds of war loud, and uh, the sky is dark clouds, red clacking energy, red light seeping through parts of them, and um, you don't look at the figure, right? No. You keep your eyes down. Um, Either but, down or at the people who are flying. All right, yeah, you look up and you're watching the people there, and luckily it's still 20 feet, um, but then the spell wears off and they begin to fall, and you have to jog a little bit to get within range, but you do so. Uh, and you cast Feather Fall, and they all begin to slow down, come to a nice, graceful ending. At which point, um, you see the people come down, um, and you keep your shield up. You first notice, and you hear the sound of a mace prying out of the ground and raising up into the air. And then hurling down very quickly and slamming itself on all the people that you just landed safely. And he scrapes it across. And you see the mace and just your vision right below your shield as the mace scrapes across. And the bodies are being pulled okay. apart across the ground. And that is where we'll leave off for this one. On that 20. <laughs> God damn. You guys are fucking insane. 